Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin and today I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Enviroscape to show how pollution enters our waterways. The Enviroscape is a three-dimensional model of a watershed, which is an area of land that drains into a common body of water, like an ocean, lake, or a river. Before we get started, it is useful to remind ourselves what kinds of pollution exist and are introduced into our waterways. These include point source pollution and non-point source pollution. When filling our bay area, it is important to consider how many demonstrations we are doing. If we are doing multiple demonstrations, we'll be using a lot of water. Therefore, the larger drainage basin would probably be more appropriate. However, if we are only doing one demonstration, the small basin would be more appropriate. The Enviroscape features an agricultural, transportation, residential, construction, and industrial areas of land, all of which have the potential to introduce pollutants into the watershed. Let's think of the Enviroscape as the watershed we live in. Now for the fun part, let's get our students involved in our demonstration. We'll start by asking the students what kind of pollution may be found in a particular area of the watershed. So what kind of pollutants do you think would come from a farm? Poo. Great! Some of our farms have livestock that roam in the fields and sometimes even in the streams. These livestock poop wherever they go, so we'll be using chocolate sprinkles to represent the manure. Does anyone want to apply the chocolate sprinkles? Having students apply the pollutants is a great way to make this experience more interactive. What else? What kinds of things do farmers use to help their plants grow? Fertilizers and pesticides! We'll be using a blue drink mix to represent the pesticides and fertilizer that some farmers introduce to their crop fields. Is there anything else you can think of? Dirt. Yes, some farmers disturb their fields to plant their crops and as a result, loosen the soil. To show this, we'll be using cocoa powder for the dirt. So, what happens when it rains? During the rainfall event, when water can no longer soak into the soil, it flows along the landscape in the form of runoff often taking whatever it comes into contact with it and into our waterways. This is an example of non-point source pollution. Common pollutants in our residential areas include litter, dog poop, and yard waste. We're going to be using seasoning salt to represent the litter and dog poop, and we're going to be using parsley flakes to represent our yard waste. Our communities are full of impervious surfaces, which are surfaces that water cannot pass through, such as roofs, roadways, and sidewalks. These surfaces produce a lot of runoff and easily transports any of these pollutants into our waterways. You can also use cocoa powder to represent the loose soil at a construction site. These loose soils are easily transported by runoff into our waterways. Some industrial plants illegally discharge their waste directly into our waterways through pipes. To demonstrate this, we're going to be using soy sauce to represent the discharge waste. Does anyone know what kind of pollution this would be an example of? Point source pollution. Great job, what made you choose point source pollution? Because the pollution is coming from a single source. In the winter months, salt is applied to the roads and sidewalks to prevent cars and people from slipping on the ice. We'll be using orange drink mix to represent our road salt. High levels of salt can have impacts on our aquatic critters and plants that live in our waterways. Today we learned what point and non-point source pollution are, what surface runoff is, what a watershed is, and how to have these conversations with our students using the Enviroscape. Don't be afraid to get your students involved in their watershed because wherever you live, you live in a watershed. This may seem obvious, but taking care of your Enviroscape ensures the quality of use and our ability to use it for many more demonstrations. An important part of this process is the cleanup. 
First, we want to drain our bay area and be sure to dispose of the waste properly. Because we use objects we can find in our kitchens, it is necessary that we make sure to thoroughly wipe everything down. This can be done using water and paper towels. Once this is done, we make sure the Enviroscape is completely dry before returning it to its case. 